be blessed by the word ministration of Evangelist Tony Fatosi. I want us to sing it with meaning. Hallelujah. Shepherd of my soul, here I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will fall on you. One of the things the Lord spoke to me this morning when I woke up, He said, Here tonight there is going to be a reconnection. And the reconnection, He said, you know, there's going to be a reconnection with the shepherd. He said, there are daughters, there are ladies in the house who have wandered away. So there is going to be a reconnection tonight. Yeah, we've been listening to it from Thursday. But God is actually going to bring a reconnection. And so, be it in the fire pasture. Or by the gentle stream. The shepherd of my soul by my side should I face a mighty mountain or oh, valleys that can be the shepherd of my soul be my God I have the Lord in the takeover. You are the one that is guiding and leading. Thank you for bringing us to the United Kingdom tonight. Lord, shepherd of my soul, I give you the full control of my lips. The Lord, you will make my leap like the pen of a ready writer to release your word into the life of your daughter. Lord, I pray that the word will be mixed with faith in the heart of every era tonight. And Jesus, you will make a name for yourself here tonight. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I'm so excited to be here this evening. Actually, I have been following since Thursday. And I had like about three programs today. I find myself going and coming back. You know, like I couldn't stay in the other places because I've been so blessed. I've been so blessed. I do not take it for granted. Is that a meetup? Thank you so much for this opportunity that you have given unto me on this exalted, beautiful altar to minister here tonight. And I will not only acknowledge you, I'm going to acknowledge your husband because I work together with my husband. And before I invite somebody, my husband verify them. So I believe your husband verify all of us. So let me to celebrate with Jesus. You have been seeing all the women acknowledging Minister Temito. But there is a woman, a man, you know, who is there, who is giving the instruction. Can we, with a clapping ovation, and if you can stand up, help me to celebrate grace in the life of Minister Daniel Joshua Uyewale. He has been a wonderful, 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 wonderful husband to our sister, and that is why we are here today. Hallelujah. Women, celebrate your husband. If others will not help you to celebrate, you celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I want to bless God for my husband. Who has also given me the permission to be here? Somebody will like, hey, or you are speaking from your house. But if he says he cannot take care of the child, or you can't just join the program, I can't join. I will just stay, you know, at home and just sit down here. So I wanted to help me to celebrate my husband. He was telling me, he said, I can't join you tonight. I wish I would join. He said, but you know, it's for women only, so I can't join. But I believe he's hearing a little in the room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me to celebrate grace in the life of my dear husband. My pastor, you know, a shepherd is a pastor. You know, the shepherd that the shepherd gave to me. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus to shepherd my life and ministry. Help me to celebrate grace in the life of my husband, Dr. Olumide Patusi. Help me to celebrate grace. I'm looking at you. Okay, daughters of this, I know there are some sisters that already spotted you. Help me to celebrate grace. Hallelujah. I celebrate him so much. And I thank God for every one of us here tonight. I want to say good evening to all the women of God in the house. You know, I am so happy 
to know, you know, this COVID-19 time has been a time of discovery, especially when you listen to other people and you attend other programs. I'm so happy to know that there are women on fire, you know, who are kids in our own generation. You understand what I mean? We have seen mommies of faith. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> and we have seen mothers in history. But when we are seen in our own day, in our own time, I celebrate all the women of God that have ministered. I've been particularly blessed by two wonderful women of God. And I spoke to Minister Teddy talking about them. But I've been so blessed. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. I also want to quickly recognize all the Daughters of Destiny uh, publication group members on Facebook who have joined me here tonight. I celebrate you all. Sister Esther from UK, I saw you on the line. The paper from Qatar, Stadiola from Highland. I saw Sister Taiwolu coming from USA. I saw Sister Soles too um, from Ghana. I saw Sister Elizabeth from Malaysia. I saw uh, the woman of God, Minister uh, Lassumbo from the US. I hope I got everybody's name, but please, if I muted your name, I saw you. God bless you, ma'am. Yeah, you're on the video. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Please, can we put on the video? Don't be like me. Like for the past three days, I've not put on my video so much in the program. Why? Because I was doing so many things. But tonight, can we put on the video so that we'll get to see each other's face? Glory be to Jesus. Uh, I've been asked to talk, and I'm going to be very fast about it, on my unique journey with my shepherd. One thing I want to say to us first and foremost, if you look at the book of Psalm 23, from verse 1, David was the one that was speaking there. It was not just an abstract psalm. It was a, 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 a psalm with an identity. So he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He was speaking for himself. And I love the topic because I'm going to speak for myself. Hallelujah. But I'm going to be asking you to join me, you know, to follow this shepherd and to allow this shepherd to guide and to live a life. You know, uh, um, uh, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And if you look at that word, Psalm 23 verse 1, is a personal relational statement. You know, I put it like that, that it's a personal and relational statement. He was not only discussing about himself. He said, the Lord is mine, which means the Lord is personally my shepherd. Now, a shepherd, you know, that is a relation. A shepherd is one that tends, that cares, you know, that look after the sheep. So it's a personal, you know, it's a relational thing. You can't have a shepherd. A shepherd is always with the sheep. A shepherd, you know, is there. There is a relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. So David was not speaking in abstract. He was talking about himself and his relationship with the shepherd. And he went on to begin to talk about a number of things that I can actually identify with in my own work, you know, with the Lord. So that statement is not a group statement. And so David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And I, Oluwato in Rachel, I am saying the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know about you, but he is my shepherd because it is not just a statement or a confession. It is personal and relational. It is personal and relational. That means there is a relationship between, you know, the shepherd and the sheep. And so therefore, David was not speaking it on behalf of any other person. He was speaking based on himself. So, and you know, it means that, you know, he and the shepherd have gone on different journey. And if you come from Africa, where I come from, I'm from Nigeria. I remember growing up, we see the shepherd. I don't know, you know, I live in the Western part of Nigeria. I grew up there. You will see them not like, I, I know maybe if you, are, you grew up from Lagos, you might not see them. You know, Lagos, you hardly see space. Or maybe some part of Lagos, you saw them. But we usually see the shepherd leading the sheep. And there are some things that the shepherds always have. You will see it's just one shepherd, but many sheep will just be following and going on. But each of those sheep has an identity and has a relationship, you know, with the shepherd. You ask me, how do I know that? The scripture makes us to understand that Jesus is the good shepherd. He said, you know that when one sheep is lost, he will leave the rest of the 99 to go after one. That is to tell you that there is a relation between them. It is not just the multitude. It is not just the gathering. It is about being single out. So my unique journey with, the, with my shepherd is a journey of being single out 
is a journey of being single out. Now, who is a shepherd? Because before I begin to talk about myself, I said, a shepherd is a person, you know, whose job is to look after the sheep. Whose job is to look after the sheep. And when the shepherd is looking after the sheep, he does it with everything in his capacity, in his hand. He does it with everything that he holds and he, you know, he has. And so therefore, to be shepherd is to be cared for by someone, you know, who cares for you. Hallelujah. By someone who cares for you. And the scripture makes me to understand the book of John chapter 10, from verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So that means there are shepherds and there are shepherds. But the shepherd we are talking about that will leave the rest of the 99 and go after one is the good shepherd, is the Lord Jesus Christ. How did my journey start? My journey is a unique one with the shepherd. How did it start? You know, it started right from the time that I was in the womb. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. The Lord said to Jeremiah, He said, before I formed you in the womb, I know you. I knew you. I already formed you. I have already ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. So even before I knew my father, even before I knew my mother, the relationship with the shepherd started from my, you know, from the womb. From the time he placed me there. Hallelujah. In my family, I am not the first. I am not the second. In fact, I came from a very large family. My father had three wives, you know. One is late now. My father is late. And then one of my stepmothers, you know, is late or also. So our family is a big one. And we are like 19 in the family. So if you look at my, me on the scale of the number of children in my father's family, even among, among my mother's children, I am the second to the last. On the trail of my father, I am number 17. So I have two, one, two younger ones behind me. And yet the shepherd said to me, before I form you in the womb, I already know you. I've already ordained you. So the relationship with the shepherd is a personal one. You know, it is one of a single, you know, being single out. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter where you were born. I was told of a man recently, a full grown up man, more than 35 years old, who does not even know his father. It doesn't matter whether you know your father or you don't know your father. But what matters is that when you connect to the shepherd, you will see that from way back, he has you in mind. When God was making heaven and earth, when he was creating everything, when he was ordaining everything to be, he has already had you in mind. And so I believe he already had me in mind. Not that I even believe, I knew, I can see that he already had me in mind. And sometimes we begin to wonder, why am I born in the family where I was born? It is part of the journey. It is part of the uniqueness of the journey. You know, the scripture says we have, you know that, you know that, uh, when, when the man that was born blind, you know, and the, the people asked Jesus and said, was it sin that made him to be blind? And Jesus said to him, well, he said it was neither a sin, but for the glory of the Lord. So our journey with the shepherd starts, you know, right from the time he placed us in our mother's womb. And everything, can I say this to us ladies? Can I say this to us sisters? Can I say this to us daughters of God? That everything that you have passed through and everything you are passing through now, and everything you are going through now, it's part of your journey. He has, he knows about it. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. So before you were born, before you were created, before you were made, the shepherd already had it in mind. He knew it. He didn't make a mistake. Sometimes we begin to wonder, why am I born in this family? I have asked that question too. But I have come in my journey, in my unique journey, you know, with the shepherd. I have come to understand that it was part of the journey. It was part of his agenda. It was part of his plan. So he didn't make a mistake. That you find yourself in the United Kingdom, that you find yourself in the US, that you find yourself wherever you are, whether by group or by straight means, it is not a mistake. It is part of the journey. And the one thing, one good thing about this shepherd is that, you know, he brings out the best, you know, from what the world thing is the combo. When I look at the story of my life, when I look at the way I was born, my mother told me that right from the day I was born, that, you know, that my eyes, you know, were open. And then other few days after I was born, my eyes became yellow, you know. Two major, you know, sicknesses just came out of my body, just like that. 
And then she began to think, what am I going to do? You know, and I, like I told you, I'm not the first child. I'm not the top. I'm not the fourth. So therefore, the woman could say, well, after all, I have had seven before I'm having you. So if she could just put me on one side and say, well, if she can live, let her live. Hallelujah. And if she don't, after all, you know, my mother wanted to have another male child. My, my immediate elder brother is here. So maybe she thought I'm going to be a boy. I said, okay, let's try again. Well, this time, maybe, you know, you know, those kind of mentality of you must have boys, boys, boys. And so she could give up on me, but she didn't give up on me. It was part of the uniqueness of the journey. And so she began to take care. She began to arrange things. She began to put things together. And when it was time for me to be Christian on the eighth day, and you know, and the pastor came, and my father asked her, So what are you going to call her? He said, Uluatoi. What it means is that God is worthy to be praised. It's part of the journey, it's part of the uniqueness. Even your name is part of that uniqueness. No matter the name that you have been given, no matter how terrible you think that name is. No matter the name that you have been called, I want you to know something that he that forms you in the womb, he knows about it. And he, the Lord Almighty, if you know, the, one of the things that the shepherd does is that he gives a new name. You know, when a name, when, when a name is not the right name, he gives a new name. So people can move through circumstances. People can move through situations and begin to do things. But the shepherd has it all planned. He has it all planned that I will be born in that home. He has it all planned that he will call me into the ministry. And when you are listening to the vow, the Lord called me into the ministry when I was in secondary school. So it means that, you know, I have met the Lord about uh, five years before the Lord called me into the ministry. And it was part of the plan. It was part of the process. It was part of the plan of the shepherd. What I'm trying to say is that even before you become aware that the shepherd is there, he has always been there. I want you to say to yourself that he has always been there. He has always been there. It's just for us to recognize the presence of the shepherd. You know, when a shepherd is going along with many sheep and is moving the sheep along the way, and, you know, they begin to move all over the place and, you know, turning around and turning around. Maybe one of the sheep begin to wonder, but he doesn't know I am here. I want you to know he knows you are there. You are not just lost in the crowd. You are not lost in the crowd. He knows you are there. He knows you are there. You are not lost in the crowd. He knows you by name. He knows every detail about you. He knows everything about you. And that is why when you are lost, he came after you. Somebody like me will have been, you know, will have been dead and forgotten, if not for the shepherd of our soul. Hallelujah. That was why some of us here, you know, if you look at the way you gave your life to Jesus, but the unique journey, you know, I said my journey started from the time I was in the womb. But my, the uniqueness of my journey started from the day I gave my life to Christ. October 18, 1991, when I surrendered my life to Jesus, they, 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 you know, there was a shift, there was a turn, there is a movement. So the uniqueness of the journey, the real relationship started with salvation. So if you are here tonight and you are listening to me and you have not yet given your life to Jesus and you are believing, you're talking about shepherd, shepherd, shepherd. I tell you, my sister, it is not yet a reality. You need to come in contact with this Jesus. I think one of the speakers that was speaking in the afternoon, so I was mentioning it, you know, and then when I was talking to it, it was coming back to my spirit. You know, there has to be a relationship. It is not the Jesus you are told. It is not about the shepherd you are told, but it is about the shepherd that you know. That day, October 18, 1991, I knew the shepherd. I gave my life to Jesus. Why? Because as young as I was, the devil already had me in his mouth. He wanted to chew me and mess up my life. A couple of days ago, I remember some things and my body shook. You know, I couldn't even say that. I remember the things, how the devil was so much after my life and he wanted to destroy me even before I could find the shepherd. I want you to know something, that if you have not yet given your life to the shepherd, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and ask him to begin to shepherd your life, I tell you something, you are just like a meat in the mouth of the lion and is ready to consume. And the Lord Almighty is here tonight. So I want to give you the opportunity if you are listening to me. You know, one of the things we taught in the Western world is that everybody is born again. How many people know that everybody is born again? You, you know that, Jesus, Abby? You, know, you understand what I mean? Everybody is born again. Everybody is coming to church. Everybody is in the choir. Everybody is in this and like that. But do you know that the relationship with the shepherd is not something you can pretend about? You know, being part of following the, you know, following the flock, following the people, 
is different from having a personal encounter with the shepherd. Jesus said, he said it, he emphasized in John chapter 10. John chapter 10, if you start reading from verse 11, he said, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Hallelujah. A lot of us go to church and then we shout hallelujah, we dance, we already know the language. In fact, you are so used to church that but you do not have a personal encounter with the Lord. Somebody wrote to me an email some days ago, uh, about last week, and she said, well, I came for the program. I've been hearing about this and everything. The summary of the whole thing was that she was hearing the message, but there is no personal encounter. There must be a personal encounter. You know, right now, I said to you, I gave my life to Christ October 18, 1991. I have not forgotten because everything changed from that moment. It was no longer the business as usual. The lordship of my life, you know, was taken over by the good shepherd. The bad shepherd, as young as I was back then, already had me in his mouth. He wanted to squeeze me and destroy me and cut me off. But the good shepherd came and he, you know, and he snatched me from the hand of the enemy. So that the Lord is ready to snatch, you know, to snatch, to, to snatch you from the mouth of the adversary. In one moment, before I go on, can you please close your eyes? Think deeply in your heart. Can you recall the day that you surrender your life to Jesus? Is there any change in your life? Was there any change in your life? You know, that songwriter said, things are different now. Something happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. Was there any change in your whole life? A lot of people say, I've given my life to Jesus. The way you talk before is the way you are still talking now. The way you dress before is the way you are dressing now. The way you behave before is still the way you are behaving now. Scripture makes me to understand that if any man be with Christ, he is a new creator. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have done what? Have become new. You cannot be with a shepherd and really have an encounter with a shepherd and your life will remain the same again. If you are here on this line today and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want to invite the shepherd and say, I want to give you the full control. You know when we were singing that song the other time? We said, shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. And I said, that song is a personal song. It's not a one that you sing with someone. I want you to think in your heart, who is in control of my life? For real, who is in charge of my life? Who is in control? And you want to surrender your life to Jesus? If you are there in the Zoom room with me, lift up your hands to Jesus. If you're watching me live, I think a part of it, this is going to Facebook. Lift up your hands to Jesus wherever you are and begin to talk to Jesus. Begin to, you know, just go the way you are. I told you I was a little girl, but my life was already messed up. But Jesus Christ came. He washed me with his blood. The good shepherd, the scripture made me to understand. It said the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. He has already died so that you will not die. He has already paid the price. He had already, you know, done everything that needs to be done. All that you just need to do is Jesus. I give you my heart today. To invite him into your heart. Don't look around, you know. Thank God for Zoom now. You see what God is doing during this COVID time. There is a bigger picture. God is preparing us. You know, now you are in your room. It is not like you are even stepping out in church. So therefore, if you don't get it right with the Lord now, I don't know when you will get it right. I just don't know where. And anything can happen any moment from now. I want you to, ask, you know, to tell him, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be my personal Lord and Savior. I want you to begin to shepherd my life. You know, I want you to begin to father me. I want you to begin to lead me. Have mercy upon my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, I receive you to my heart. Jesus, the good shepherd. Today, the 25th of July, 2020. Oh, yeah, my love, I pray for someone taking that decision that it shall be a turning point in your life. When I gave my life to Christ, it was a turning point. It shall be a turning point in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask him to take over. Father, Lord, I thank you because you are God. Lord, you are, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Thank you, Lord, for this decision. For this invitation. You said if there is anyone that comes to you, there is no one, you will not cast us away. And you said we should come the way we are. And lift up our hands with my sister. And I say, Jesus, oh God, Lord, come into our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and be our Lord and Savior. Come and be our shepherd. Come begin to take care of us, to tend us, and to lead us. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. I congratulate you if you have taken that decision. You can rent a uh, minister to me. Okay? And let her know, I took the decision during this program. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, what I'm going to be saying after now, you will understand it. So my journey with the shepherd took a new dimension, began the day I gave my life to Jesus. And, you know, and because Christ 
you know, he, he, he doesn't joke with any sheep. You know, he, he cares for us. You know, he went after me and brought me here. And so the relationship started. And what is the uniqueness of my, my, you know, my relationship with the Lord? Is that, you know, I began to know his voice. You see, when you stay with someone, when you dwell with somebody, and you hear them every day, there is no way you will not recognize their voice. You know, as women here, when we are pregnant with our babies, do you know that when you speak, the baby already hear your voice? And that is why when the baby is born, it is the mother that the baby first recognizes. Why? Because you have been with it together. So it is not just to accept a shepherd. I began to spend time with the Lord. I began to dwell with him. I began to, you know, take time with him. I think it was a woman of God that was ministering the afternoon yesterday. And she was saying, just, just go inside sometime. Take 30 minutes and sit before the shepherd. Talk to him. Communicate with him. That is the way, you know, get in. What she was talking about, I think, intimacy. That is the way to know the shepherd. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. It is because when we spend time together with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will recognize his voice. And people do ask me, how come you got it very, you know, you got it right early in life and you had the voice of God. Five years after I gave my life to Jesus, I, you know, the Lord called me into the ministry. It was because of the time of intimacy. We will go for youth camp. We will go for different programs. We were encouraged to pray. I will sit down and study the Bible as young as I was. I want you to know something. That, you know, when you are with the age shepherd, age is irrelevant. Hallelujah. Age is irrelevant. Why? Because every sheep is equal before the Lord. Every sheep is important. In fact, he will reach out and look out for you when things begin to go wrong. Hallelujah. So I begin to spend time with the shepherd. I begin to read the scripture and I begin to hear his voice. You see, the thing is that when I want to recognize my son's voice, I have to listen to him from time to time. I have to spend time with him. I have to pay attention so that I know that this is what he says. And so therefore my journey began fully with recognizing his voice. This is what the Lord is saying to me. And how do you recognize God's voice? Whatever God says with you is going to be in line with the scripture. One of the scriptures the Lord first brought to me is in Jeremiah chapter 1. If you can open it, please do. In Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 5. From, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 5. And the shepherd, he said to me, you know, he said, he gave me that scripture again. He said that, you know, before I found you in your mother's womb. So I began to look at all the things and all the challenges that surround my back. And I was like, Father, well, were you part of it? He said, yes, I am part of it. So whatever thing that God has brought you through, or he has taken you through, it is part of the journey. But it is because God is going to use it for, you know, you know, in the future. There are certain things you can't talk about if you have not been there. You can't talk about the relationship with the shepherd when you don't have one. You can't talk about certain things happening when it has not happened to you. You know, so therefore, the uniqueness of our journey also means, you know, my own journey also means that God made me to pass through some things that were not coming. God made me to pass through some things that were not common. Hallelujah. God made me to pass through some things that were not common. Ah, glory be to Jesus. So therefore, if you look at that, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, he said, he started with that. If I found you in the womb, I knew you, I ordained you, a prophet unto the nation. And then I begin to wonder, but I'm a lady. How can I be a prophet unto the nation? Then I begin to understand that with God, you know, being shepherding us, you know, I, among the sheep that are following, you know, that follows the shepherd, they may be able to separate male and female. But physically speaking, when the sheep are following the shepherd, there is no gender barrier. I want you to say that there is no gender barrier. There is no gender barrier. So that you are a female sheep does not mean you cannot get close to the shepherd. Hallelujah. It is the shepherd of our days that are limited. But the shepherd that I'm talking about, the good shepherd, there is no barrier. Because he is going to tend and take care of you. He will not take advantage of you. There are shepherds and there are shepherds. I am telling you about this shepherd that will not take advantage of your sex. That will not take advantage of your gender. You know, so many stories have been, you know, have been told of women who were taking you know, advantage of because they were trying to get closer to the physical shepherd, not getting closer to the one who is the shepherd of our soul. So therefore, the one that you should get closer to is the shepherd of my soul. He said, shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. He's the one that can take care of the soul, that can take care of the body. When the shepherd of the soul is in place, he will guide you to the one that will shepherd you physically. Hallelujah. He there is need for that. 
you will ordain yourself and guide yourself. I want to thank God because God guided my step. You know, along the way, so many things happened. What was the true weakness of the journey? It is to recognize his voice. And so when God said, I have called you, I have ordained you as a prophet to the nation. I was just a, a secondary school since one student, and the Lord was already calling me into the ministry. He did not only call me, he told me the name, he told me all the things. Some of the things that just happened 24 years after now. And he told me, I will be, and I said, how am I going to do it? He said, just follow me. Just obey. Just follow. Just obey. I will go to that sanctuary because of time. Quickly, I run through one or two things in my own personal journey, in the uniqueness of my journey. So being a female, being a female is not a barrier. You know, because when the shepherd shepherd, he doesn't know a female sheep sheep or know a male sheep like that. Even the scripture makes us to understand in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28, he said, and it shall come to pass in the last day that I will part my spirit upon all flesh. He did not say only male. So the appearing of God's spirit, it's upon all flesh. God is pouring out the spirit upon all flesh. And you know, I was just a tiny small little girl there. But you know, I was just a tiny small little girl at that time. But one of the good things about the shepherd was that, you know, uh, it is not about your status as well. It is about who is in us. Scripture says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Lord made me to understand that. Don't look at this finish size now. I used to be very tiny, one small, tiny little girl. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I used to be very, very tiny little girl that you can hardly, you know, look at and then you'll be wondering, you know, if the hair blew like this, it would blow me home. But though the physical wind was blowing, but the one on the inside was the one that is great. You know, so I became aware of the presence of the shepherd. Some of us have been called into the ministry. Are you aware that you are not alone? Even though you have been working and doing everything for the past 10 years, 15 years. Are you aware that the one that is on the inside of you is a mighty one? You know, Psalm 23. I'm going to go through it because of time. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. It means both physically, spiritually, in every wise, I lack nothing. Though I was a tiny little girl, though I was physically small, but when I open my mouth to speak, I speak with the voice of the shepherd. And the Lord is going to amplify somebody's voice here today. That when you begin to speak henceforth, you will not speak with your own voice anymore. You will speak with the voice of the shepherd. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, why do we need to speak with the voice of the shepherd? Because the voice of the shepherd is the voice that resounds all over. The Bible talks about the voice of the Lord. That it resounds all over. It's all over. It goes round. When God speaks, the whole heart trembles. Hallelujah. So that was one of the things the Lord made his word to be strong in my mouth. I did not lack goodness. As far back as I look back, if you bring me to talk before the president of the whole nation, I have no fear. Because what? The shepherd is with me. Hallelujah. The shepherd is with me. And as tiny as I was at, leading the ministry, leading people that were older than me, is was my strength. So I lack nothing. I like courage. I, I, I do not lack, I lack nothing. I do not lack courage. It is all I have gotten. And the Lord made me to understand from that moment. You know, one of the things in my own unique journey is that one with God is a maturity. Hallelujah. Is somebody listening to me tonight? One with God is a majority. You know, you told me that in this journey, the only person that matters is the shepherd. And the shepherd must not leave you. I say the shepherd must not leave you. The shepherd, you know, must just stand there. So he is the most important person. And the one that has the final say over every other thing. Hallelujah. He is the most important person. Is the one that has the final say over every other thing. So therefore, I lack nothing. I lack, you know, I lack nothing. I lack not the presence of God. I lack not the grace of God. It says, He made me to lie down in green pasture. In my own journey, in my own journey, the, you know, with the shepherd, is a journey of different level. Hallelujah. You know, like my own ministerial journey, it's a journey of valley and mountain. But one thing, one secret that I have discovered is that, you know, if you can recognize the voice of the shepherd and you obey, hallelujah, you recognize the voice of the shepherd and you obey the shepherd. You follow every instruction, everything that he says. And one of the good things about the shepherd is that 
when your when as you as your relationship grow with the Lord, then he can begin to redirect out of his mercy. How many people notice that when you know the shepherd back home in Africa, they go around with what? With a rod and a staff. A rod and a staff. The rod is to beat you back to the way. I tell you something. It is the it is the sheep that the shepherd loves that you beat back the way. What am I trying to say is that my own unique journey with the shepherd is the one that is a correctional one. He corrects me at every point in time. Hallelujah. Scripture make me to understand that it is the child that the father loves that he corrects. Hallelujah. It is the child that the father loves. Hey, let me put it this way, that it is the child that the shepherd loves that he corrects. So the rod there is to beat you back and say, this is what I ask you to do. So many times I've got my hand burnt and then the shepherd do what? He beats me back on track. Many times he made some things to happen and said, but, and I will, you'll be wondering, but God, why did it happen this way? It is part of the love of the shepherd. Because the man, 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 the man,